Free run episode 21. Now that our colleague collegiate chat has ended, the fight will begin. Yeah, I feel like there's some, something very, very relevant to this that's going to come out. With oh, they knew each other. Yeah, I don't know where this is going yet, but one thing the show does such a great job of is like Freerin and Fern's opponents, it always feels like there's so much more going on beneath the surface that you don't know. The show itself is their magical strategy. It doesn't play all its cards. It wouldn't surprise me at all if this relationship deeply informed some of the strategy, the overall game plan, need to be deceptive, etc. because of this apparent great force that is Siri. Maybe there's lineage here too. We're related, but we're not the same, maybe. So curious about this character. So curious. What, is, what does she want? She has everything, or she can do anything. She has every spell ever made. She can grant any wish. What does something like that want? What's left to do with the vast amount of time you have on the planet? What are the things that are still outside of your grasp? The power to be a god? Episode 21, The World of Magic. Bar-Guranto. I'm so over this exam. <laughs> I'm so over it. I'll I will stop with the educational rants. Beautiful weather we're having in this dome. Well, I guess the collegiate talking has not ended. Oh yeah, everyone's gonna get that. That's resonant. Yeah, yeah, okay. There is lineage. Freerun's mage grandmother. And she's still around where Flame is gone. But Freerun's never mentioned her. Hmm, interesting. I have a gut sense that that's not the point. And maybe this is indicative of a rift or difference between them. I think part of the joy for Freerun is the discovery. In a way, this is a personality test. I thought so. Right, Dinkle just said that too. And here's the rift. The faith that Flam had in Freerun too. That's interesting. What's behind that? I have a feeling this too has multiple meanings. I think it has an emotional, spiritual meaning, and also like a one deeply rooted in the magical system. Got a waterbender against an earthbender. Oh wait, Khan is the waterbender, so Levine is ice. Oof, ouch. Yeah, can be a weakness. Also cool that Levine and Connor are essentially the same element. It's one harder than the other. <laughs> it's so great. It's so great. Like, I can't even be mad at it. I can't even be mad at the exposition. I love it. They can't. They're just not capable of fighting without going into the deep roots and history and theory of magic. They just love it so much. Instant solidarity between them, despite, you know, being at each other's throats. They're all just friends divided by circumstance. In a lot of other shows, it would be like, okay, this is just power exposition or world exposition, which it is too. But there's something about it that's so fitting for the way mages have been developed and just their raw drive and passion for it, how much they give themselves to the craft. How could they not discuss? Okay. Okay. Okay, there's a metaphor there. Well, I mean, I guess it's very simple, which is just that there's power and simplicity. For any given thing, depending on the field, there are always a million different things you could do, try to do, but the, the strength will probably come from the core, the essentials, the unchanging, maybe a little bit of the Pareto principle here too, where an outsized portion of your results come from a tiny percentage of your work. But like, imagine if you really honed in on that aspect of it. A little bit of a rock, scissors, paper thing going on here. Oh, please don't kill them. Uh, oh, okay. 
Okay. Yeah, you found you found some edge there. Everyone's so busy protecting against magic. Oh, good. That's not what you said earlier. I guess it was a bluff. Oh, bloodbending is happening. Oh, I guess he's he's aware of blood bending. He just cancelled blood bending. Oh, I mean it's smart strategy, though. Well, I mean Denkin will lose. Though Denkin probably a badass. I mean, at least he figured that out early. Combo elements. She's responsible for all this? I knew she was evil. She's the real culprit. She's the one behind this company's culture. I wonder if Siri doesn't on some level fear Freerun because she can't understand her, or because Freerun seems to have something that Siri can't imagine having, or doesn't understand to exist. She's so powerful, right? But like, feels like she's missing something, something critical. From inside or outside? Depends on how you evaluate, I guess. No great shock there. Not castration. Oh, she closed that gap fast. Still hasn't shown her cards. I mean, she's not gonna murder you in cold blood, but exam might be over. みんな今放置会に対する指導試合ではない。しかし、先服しているんでしょう。指令を持ってここに来て。来なければ電源を殺す。ね、ブラフ。It's not very convincing. <laughs> That was fast, damn those reflexes. <laughs> this binding spell has all sorts of uses. Oh, that's sweet. Alright, that makes it better. She just has a good heart. Something he really wants. <laughs> I like how wealth and influence are the sum total of what one could possibly want. Well, really, I think striving for those things is sort of an intermediary step to try to find those things. I mean, my take on this has sort of always been non-negative, non-judgmental about the pursuit of anything. Like, it can all be good. It depends on how it's approached. I have no problem whatsoever with seeking or obtaining wealth or influence. But at this point, I'm thoroughly convinced that those are going to be admittedly great tools for affecting material realities of one's life, which can be everything and the key to happiness if you're in really bad shape up to a certain point beyond which it kind of loses any real personal meaning, except maybe in the lessons you learn and the narrative you form of yourself in the pursuit of those things, which could probably be replaced by the pursuit of anything of substantial difficulty. No, there's a lot more to aspire to. And that's sort of my question for Siri. Siri has everything. It doesn't seem particularly grounded or happy. I have a feeling that's not all. Freeman could probably sense what's going on. Oh wow, that's cool. It's kind of cool. I feel a little bit validated or justified in my long, bitter rant about the education system, or in one of them at least. I mentioned that in my experience, what makes things elite is not the school or the program, typically, but the quality of the students that results from a very highly selective group. That is kind of born fruit in this arc where, I mean, they actually all seem really talented and really solid, maybe aside from Yubel. A lot of them talk a big game about I'm going to kill this person, I'm going to kill that person, I'll do whatever it takes to win. A and then it turns out that, you know, they have scruples. They're not bloodthirsty murderers, except for maybe Yubel. There's always one. It was Freerun. It does look deadly. It's two against one, though. Surely you can combine the, the various stages of water. Well, so much for that. 
Please tell me Furin has decided this test is over. Oh, she's giving them water. That's what it is. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is gonna ruffle some feathers. You know what? I love, I love this. I love this. Good. I'm free when I don't play by your your exam rules. <laughs> Get a powerful enemy. Siri seems like the kind of person that would. Oh, I was gonna say hate to be outshined, but maybe right. She loves competition. I think that's what Flam was implying. Maybe I'm not giving her enough credit. Still a lot to explore. That's high praise. <laughs> the, the side eye. I mean, she has all of the weather. Maybe turns this earth to mud. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> he just accepts his, his death. <laughs> Aww. He, wow, well, wow, he might actually be dead from the fall. It's no joke. We even released them from the tree, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a huge relief. One great point that was made to me is that a lot of things are happening at once. A lot of things are true at once. Freeman is better than this exam. She doesn't need it. It is sort of an insult to her, or it could be seen that way. But she's so far above it that it wouldn't be an insult to her. It's just not concerning. And in the meantime, she's someone who loves side quests and wasting time. And there's an opportunity for Fern to develop and her two new female protégés. So the terribleness is not only neutralized, but warped into a positive just by virtue of how far above it Freeran is, which is kind of a nice and cool thing to conceptualize and aim for. Head pads! Double head pads. Now you learn to love it. Yeah, in the argument about how much luck was involved in this exam, <laughs> the, the real bad luck was just doing it at the same time as Freerun. All's well that ends well. Yeah, I mean, there's still birds out there. Or can you try to steal? This is this relationship is very intriguing. Yeah, I think maybe that is the reason Bririn has sort of expressed a distaste for the way she's grown accustomed to using magic, despite her innate natural love for it. It's really not about the fight or the competition or the battle or the destruction. It's more pure than that, but I, I mean, I think that's just how it goes a lot of the time. There's the purity of your love for the thing and the purity of the thing itself, and then there's the ways in which it meets the world and fulfills practical purposes, and those are not always the same thing. To her credit as a teacher, it seems like she's developing for, an, for both. <laughs> I don't know if you should tell her, but for an, I don't know. This is true. Ye yes. Right, and Ubu wants to kill you. But there's something about the dynamic that feels right. I don't know how to explain it. Can we just have it? Can we have it? I mean, you could try. Salt moons. They might not know that. Okay, what are you going to settle this with fisticuffs? <laughs> we are settling this with fisticuffs. Damn, they got a mean right hook or uppercut. Here we are using up all our mana. Did he break his arm on that guy's face? God, there are more rounds of this. <laughs> no. Why? I hate you. Oh yeah, Stark. <laughs> Bro, it's a break from like the dishes and the laundry and the shopping and the cleaning and all of those things that you were doing. But I bet he's lonely and misses them anyway. <laughs> or not. 
do everything. I do everything. <laughs> everything. Free and infirm napping, eating cakes, making flowers. I do all the housework, it seems. I definitely could be wrong, but I expect the exam to get worse before it get, gets better. I think the aim is at least partly to keep things exclusive, to let only a small group of people in their club, which means some arbitrary barriers to success that are not really reflective of, you know, magic ability or the ability to survive like in that northern area. It is really interesting sometimes to learn a thing and then do a thing and see where the split is, you know, to find out what actually is useful and what is kind of just academic fluff. And that's not even necessarily always a fault of the curriculum. It could be that the field of study has multiple applications. And so it's designed to give you all of them to a certain reasonable degree so that you can choose which area you specialize in. That's a fair counterpoint, I think. But actual work, so many things are things you might not expect, or a lot of it comes down to the intangibles or perhaps just universal skills that are not specific to the, the field of study itself. One of the most obvious ones being social. When I finally managed to overcome the damage that that psychology professor did and graduate <laughs> as an economics major, my first job was as a stockbroker. And on my first day of work, my boss, who became something like a father figure to me, ascertained my major and told me to forget everything I had learned, which, you know, it was largely a joke, but in the joke contained some truth. As I mentioned, the math, especially is something I left behind me and never looked back, despite all the time I spent learning it. Also with philosophy, I guess, just for me personally, a lot of philosophy in school is taught from a historical perspective. And there definitely is some utility in that because you can kind of chart uh, an interesting narrative in the progression of thought from, you know, one age to another. Then ultimately the way I personally find the most utility in it, which is very specific to me in the way I view a lot of things, is I, I don't really care about the facts, figures, details. I want like the core raw idea. It doesn't really matter to me who said what or what else was going on at the time. There are also just some weird things you, you can't really define and can't teach. Having been in the position a few times where I did hiring, there's this quality I don't have a word for, but people either have it or they don't. And it's something like common sense. It's not quite there, but just the general ability to reason and do things competently and not be a problem. In my experience, there's not too strong of a correlation between the amount of knowledge someone has and their level of that thing, whatever it is. I'm definitely not against learning something in advance. I think that can be important and definitely works better for, for some. There's often a certain minimum of that required at least, and it definitely is the best approach for some people. I just personally think that you only really know something and what's important when you do it. So it's funny to think about that in terms of Freerun, the character, like what is the life of a mage and what do you really need? And we use Freerun as an example. What is it? First of all, the mastery of the core basics of magic so that you're not dying. You're not caught off guard, having sufficient power to defeat threats. And then after that, it's like how to hitch wagons, how to clean statues, how to get along with village people, and how to recognize your deficiencies so you can address them with the appropriate members in your party.